I grew up in a little neighborhood in North Philadelphia called Olney. I had three fathers. My uh, biological father abandoned me as a child. My mother then got married um, a second time to a man who was physically and verbally abusive. He was probably in the picture a couple years. He didn't last too long. And then not long after that, my mom married, who I call my dad today, my third stepfather, who showed us a lot of love. My mother was really good at encouraging us and making us feel loved. She just really put a lot of time and energy into that. Um, however, having you know three fathers um, really messed the psychology up in your mind, you know, of, um, what's healthy and what's not. So most of my time growing up was spent outside the house, playing these sports, doing these things with my friends. And I just really wrapped myself up in my friends rather than these feelings of, you know, not knowing who I was because of the fathers that I had or didn't have. I just wanted to escape from any thoughts. I didn't want to think. My mother was a bartender, so there was a, a mini bar in our house. Um, so I started making drinks. Um, and uh, I would invite my friends over, and we would make these drinks, and we would, you know, start to get drunk. And, um, and then people would, you know, uh, bring weed, and we'd get high. At 14, I remember I couldn't stop drinking. I remember, like, there was a problem. I was 14 years old. You know, sneaking beer past my parents so I can get it up in my room so that I can drink by myself. It, so it started off social with my friends, but then it soon became like this, this thing that I needed. About 16, I started to do cocaine. I remember the, the first time I did heroin. I think I might have been 16 or 17. I was living on the streets. I didn't care about my life. I didn't care about anybody else's life. I got this great idea. I'm going to fill up a needle full of blood, and I'm going to start telling people I want your money. I'm going to tell them I have AIDS. I'm going to make that up, tell them I have AIDS, give me your money. So that's what I did. I was scared. I was terrified. But I wasn't terrified of the streets. I was terrified of this hopelessness. I was terrified of being alone. I was terrified of not having anybody. I remember I ran into a guy, and we had this conversation. And uh, I said, do you think a church would, would take me? Um, you know, would just let me, like, stay there until I can get this heroin addiction off my back? He said, I'll tell you this, you know, if you cry out to Jesus, he'll hear you. That night I cried out, God, if you're real, save me. The next day in a robbery gone bad, I got locked up. Two months after being locked up, I made it to a church service. And in the church service, they asked an absurd question. They said, do you want to accept Jesus into your heart? And I thought, absolutely. I wish somebody would have asked me this a long time ago. You know, I look back all these years later, I realize that God had prepared my heart for that moment because there was something that I was supposed to do. And this was like just the beginning of the journey. I'm in prison and I'm going to Bible study and um, I'm, like, I'm like free for the first time. All that hopelessness that I had felt previously, I, I'm filled with hope now. I know that God loves me. However, I didn't love God. I, I didn't trust him. I, I you know, still had these imageries of being abandoned, these imageries of being hurt, being abused. So I'm reading my Bible, I'm going to church, and little by little, you know, I started putting some things down. I started saying, you know, th this isn't who I am anymore. The biggest impact that Jubilee had on my life was helping me discover what it really means to be a Christian. I was pretty solid on what I believed when I got to Jubilee, but I didn't know how to live this life out. And it gave me that breathing room, just enough to kind of find who I was, my place. A year after I graduated the program, they had hired me to be the aftercare supervisor. Not only did I graduate this program, but I love this program. I love this program, I love this place, I love the people, I love the students, I love the idea of giving somebody an opportunity to grow in Christ Jesus for one year, and then they give you these tools and these stepping stones to go back into society. 
I had an abusive father. I had a father who had abandoned me. So I never really got the Father's love. I remember the Bible telling me that God loves me, the Father loves me, but I didn't really understand it. I just chose to believe it. So my wife got pregnant, and uh, I'll never forget when Lydia was born. I never felt love like that in my life. And I held her, and I looked at her, and I whispered in her ears, nothing would separate you from my love. And my heart stopped, and I realized that's how God loves me. Somebody asked me recently, they're like, you do a lot of stuff. And they're like, what's, what's, the, what's your favorite thing to do? And I said, going into the prison, going into ground zero, into the prison to talk to these men, to give this hope. That's my favorite thing to do. I wouldn't change anything about my life. There's a scripture that says that God comforts us in our afflictions so that we can comfort those in their afflictions. And so I look at my whole story. And I say, you know, all that needed to play out so that I can have the passions that I have. And without coming from that brokenness, without coming from that hopelessness, I wouldn't be able to speak to somebody's hopelessness today. I wouldn't be able to invest in, say, a Jubilee student right now um, that's going through that or is experiencing some kind of hopelessness. When they come to me and they're sad, and they're like, I have nothing. I'm like, amen. Because if you have nothing, you have nothing to hold back to, then we got everything to look forward to. So often people want to hold what they have in the past, and it cripples them to go ahead in the future. So experiencing hopelessness in that level motivates me to work with the guys today. <laughs>